discrete time systems now yes sir we are dandel accumulators sir oh accumulator okay okay so let us take so like actually half way was done sir like we were talking about the general definition and then you were saying that y0 is equal to x0 plus x minus 1 plus x minus 2 dot dot, dot. then uh, y1 is equal to x1 plus y0 so we're going like that sir okay then uh, for for a, for a give for for a given input i uh, i have given uh, just uh, i tried to find out the output now y0 and y1 two outputs most probably i uh, found yes, out sir. yes sir yes sir okay so 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 you can continue the same uh, process to find out the values uh, for other time uh, means timing stands for that means uh, y1 uh, y2 y3 y4 y minus 1 y minus 2 all these outputs you can calculate using the same procedure so i am not calculating all the values now so just you uh, proceed and complete that part you found a few more output values for uh, values for different uh, values of n okay so just i am showing the procedure for finding out the output and nothing else here now i i, I am giving one problem here another problem suppose Uh, an accumulator is defined by this. The accumulator is defined by this. This just like uh, using our previous uh, equation, input-output equation. That is, k is equal to minus infinite to infinite. Uh, sorry, minus infinite to n x k. Okay. Uh, this. is excited this accumulator is excited the above accumulator is excited by an input sequence X n is equal to n into u n. I I think all of you know what is u n. U n is the unit step function. Okay, in discrete time. That is u n is this actually. U n is equal to one for n less greater than equal to zero. Is equal to zero for n less than zero. So this is the definition of u n. Okay. So this accumulator is excited by this input. Okay, now if you think, sir, what is uh, the definition of U N, sir? If you could repeat the uh, definition of U N. Already, I have given in our previous class. I am writing once again. U N is equal to one for n greater than equal to zero. Okay, is equal to zero for n less than zero. Oh, okay, sir. For discrete time system. Okay, and n is integer, you know. So this is the definition of U N. This u n is multiplied with n here in x n. This is x n, but x n is equal to n into u n. Okay. Now you have to determine. That is the question. Is this determine its output under the condition that number 1 it is initially relaxed it is means actually the system is initially relaxed it is initially relaxed okay and number 2 initially initially y of minus 1 is equal to 1 initially relaxed means y of minus 1 is equal to 0 actually this is called initially relaxed condition 
the output if the output for n less than 0 is 0 then the system is called initially relaxed system okay that's why sometimes this is not written explicitly just it is written in some some questions you can get that it will be said that the system is initially relaxed whenever it is this this is written for some problem initially relaxed the system is initially relaxed then you have to assume that y of minus 1 is equal to 0 this indicates that the system is initially in relaxed condition if y of minus 1 is a uh, minus 1 is not is equal to 0 it has some value it may be positive it may be, may be negative then this system is not initially relaxed so in that case actually the initial value this is the initial value this initial value will be given to you and you have to use this initial value for computing or for finding out the overall output of the system okay now we have to find out the output under these two conditions okay now let us see how to solve this type of problem now what is output actually from the input output relationship of this accumulator the output is given in this form k is equal to minus infinite to a n x k this is the form now what i can write here that is equal to k is equal to minus infinity to here i am writing minus 1 then x k okay plus summation k is equal to 0 to n x k now can you tell me whether uh, I have written whatever I have written here that is correct or not do you agree with me that this equal to this the first line equal to the second line because that I have split of this summation into two parts from minus zero to minus minus infinite to minus one then from the zero to n this simple part do you agree with me Yes. Anyone yes, can? Sir. Okay. If anyone can have, uh, if it is not clear to any person, any student, then you can please uh, ask me. You can raise any question here if you have. Okay. Now, here, this first term you can write on u of uh, y of minus 1. And the second term I am writing as it is k is equal to 0 to n x k. Why it is y of minus 1? If y n is equal to summation k is equal to minus infinite to n x k, then in place of n, if you write minus 1, then here it will be minus 1. Because n is the variable and k is the index. So yn is equal to k is equal to minus one uh, minus infinity to n. So whenever you are writing minus one here, k is equal to minus infinity to minus one, then automatically the argument of y will be minus one. And that's why for this particular part. For this particular part, I have written this y of minus one. Okay, so this is the case that that is now our y n. So now, what, sir, what about huh? minus one to zero, sir? Minus one to no. Okay, we are taking at the n is, n is okay, discrete. Okay. N is discrete. Uh -huh. Okay, yes, sir. got it, got it. Okay, sir. So this is n is discrete, so in between minus 1 and 0, there is no value. Now, if you want to find out yn for the first case, for the first case, what was the condition we had taken? That is y of minus 1 is equal to 0. The system is relaxed condition. So 
for to solve the first part i have to put y of minus 1 is equal to 0 so you write 0 plus you know what is the value of this it is nothing but sorry summation in place of xk what i have to write k uk k is equal to 0 to n because xn is equal to a new n so xk is equal to k uk am i right yes sir this is equal to 0 plus and uk is equal to see uk for positive values of k here you see is uk is is equal to 1 for k greater than equal to 0 it is the definition of unit step function because un is equal to 1 for n greater than equal to 0 so in that case it will be nk uh, in that case it will be nk right because uk is 1 so 0 to n uh, uh, that, that 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 i want to write here that that is equal to if if from k is equal to 0 to n here you just write k because this is 1 uk is equal to 1 and if that means actually what you are doing that is equal to 0 plus here it is 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus like this okay up to him yes sir so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to n this is the um, this is nothing but the summation of n natural numbers Okay, so this will be equal to n into n plus 1 divided by 2. This is the equation for summation of natural numbers. 1 to n number of natural numbers. The first term is 1. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 8. So this is the result. So ultimately, the result is this result is yn is equal to n into n plus 1 divided by 2 this is the answer when the first condition is satisfied that means when the system is initially relaxed in that case it is this when the system is not initially relaxed, but when the system is not initially relaxed, when y of minus 1 is equal to 1, this is the second case. So in that case, yn is equal to 1 plus summation k, k is equal to 0 to n, this is equal to 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus n is equal to 1 plus n into n plus 1 divided by 2. This is the answer for this y n. Hello, uh, sir. Yes. Hello. Sir, I have a confusion, sir. You have a confusion? Yes, sir. Uh, please tell me. Sir y of n will be 0 for anything n less than 0 then how can we y y of n is equal to 0 for anything n less than 0 why because sir uh, xn is equal to n into u of n and u of n will always be huh it may be that y for negative values of n, I am not taking. I am I am taking for positive values of n. But y n is the output is, which is already stored in the dip, 
system. If yn, if you, you write y of minus 1 is equal to 1, that means this is the initial condition. This is stored in the system before applying the excitation. Since it is already present in the system, that's why y of minus 1 in place of y of minus 1 is equal to 1, that is I am writing. But after that, you see, only positive values of A in the values are given. This is one that is here. Actually, K is equal to 0 to 1 UK. I am writing UK is equal to 1 for positive values of A. That's why here there is no values for negative values of K. K starts from 0 and to N. Okay. Yes, I'm going to okay. Yes. Okay. So this is one example of how to solve the problem. Okay. Now the digital systems can be represented in block diagram. So I want to discuss this block diagram representation. Block diagram of discrete time system. So, if you want to represent a discrete time system in block diagram form, then you will see that a discrete time system consists of a few blocks. Few building blocks are there. Basic, few basic units are there, and one complex or complete discrete time system is the interconnection of those blocks. Okay. And just I am writing those units. Number one, adder. Adder is one unit. If I want to add one number with another number to another number, then I need some adder. So in block, in block diagram form, of discrete time system, adder is simply symbolically represented by this. Okay, this is output. These are the these are two inputs. Okay, here just I have written two input adder. Suppose x1 is one input, x2 is another input. You can use multiple input adders also, no problem. Okay. And this is your output one for this adder. So it indicates that actually yn is equal to x1n plus x2n. This is one simple unit. Actually, how an adder, adder is designed in discrete times in, in, in digital domain, you know, all of you know, all I think. You have already learned what is full adder, what is half adder, what is serial adder, what is parallel adder, etc. etc. Okay, so it is not uh, right time to discuss the basic structure of adder. Just I want to represent the adder in block diagram form or in symbolic form. Okay, so this is one adder. Number two, another device is there that is called uh, multiplier. So, multiplier. In multiplier, the structure is something like this. You can multiply like this. Actually, you can multiply two different inputs or you can multiply a constant term with input with one input so here you can write this in this way x1 t x x1 n x2 n and y n this is the output of the multiplier y n is equal to x1 n into x2 n okay now if one input is constant suppose for example this input x2 is suppose a then in this case a into x n will be x1n will be in that case 
y n will be equal to a into x1. A is a constant. Okay. So this is another unit, multiplier unit. Okay. Then another important unit is there. This is called a unit time delay unit time delay unit time delay. you know i i will try to uh, make understand what is unit time delay before that i am just writing the block diagram form which is representing actually time delay unit Unit time delay means one sample delay. It will create one sample delay of the input signal. Here at the input, if you give some signal xn, then in the output you will get the output of the unit delay system you will get here. Ua, yn is equal to ax n minus 1. One sample delay. And here, z to the power minus 1, this symbol is used to indicate unit time delay. Okay. And sometimes in some books, you can get this kind of, here sometimes it is written t, and here x n, and here x n minus 1 this is also this t means actually this is one sample time delay. this t actually in some books it is written as ts sampling time interval in some books it is written simply t ts is the time interval means time interval between two successive samples suppose this is one sample this is the next sample this is then another sample then the time delay a ts means actually it is the distance between two successive samples. Suppose this is one sample and this is another sample and the distance between these two successive samples is Ts in time. Okay. And therefore, this Ts sometimes Ts is written. And in, if you write here two Ts, that means here it will be x n minus 2 two sample delay. Now I will show what is a one sample delay and what is two sample delay. In case of two sample delay, in this upper block diagram means which is written first, this for this block diagram, if you want to make it two sample delay xn minus 2, then it will be z to the power minus 2. For k samples delay, it will be z to the power minus k and it will be kts. For, for for upper block it will be j to the power minus k and for the lower block it will be k into ts then uh, the input signal uh, then, then then the delay will be like this then the output signal will be x n minus k ts or simply sorry ts no, will not be there sorry, sorry. it will be like this x n minus k this will be the output in that case. So the power of Z or this coefficient of Ts will indicate how many samples delay are created by this delay unit. Unit time delay means actually one sample delay is created. One sample delay means suppose this is your signal with the graph already I have drawn. Now, if you want to create one sample delay, okay, one sample delay, one sample delay means actually here z to the power minus 1 and this yn and here xn. If this is up, suppose this is our xn. This signal is the xn. Okay. So, in this case, for one sample delay, I have three sample values. So, here here and here 
this first sample value will appear here. And the second sample value will appear here. And the third sample value will appear here. That means at zero, there is no sample. But initially, for at x, for xn, you saw, you see that at zero, there was one sample value. But here, there is no sample value. It is simply zero. Okay. That means this sample value has been shifted here. This simple sample value has been shifted here. And this sample value has been shifted here. This is one sample value. And the distance between this and this, actually, with uh, Ts. That means the first sample is delayed and the amount of delay is this. Okay, so this is one sample delay. Similarly, for two samples delays, simply this first sample will appear here in this position. Then this second sample will appear here in this position and third sample will appear here somewhere here. So that will be two samples delay. So this is the delay unit. Okay. Now, just I, I will give you one difference equation. Uh, just I want to mention what is difference equation. Actually, in discrete time systems, the input-output relationship is sometimes re represented in terms of difference equations. In case of continuous time analog signal, uh, the system input-output is represented with the help of differential equation. Am I correct? I think you have studied that part. Just I, I am giving one example in uh, continuous time analog signal for continuous time analog signal. Then I will say how you can represent discrete time system by using similar type of concept. Suppose I have a system like this. This is one resistance. Value is R. Then, sorry. This value is R. Then I have one capacitance here. The value is C. Simple. This is nothing but one RC circuit. This is one RC circuit. Okay. Now, if you want to find out the output voltage, suppose here the input is, whatever input is give, you are given here, that is suppose, sorry, here, since I am taking a continuous time signal, therefore, I will write this as XT. This is the input signal, okay? This is your input signal. And here you, you will get the output signal, YT, okay? Now, it is possible for you to develop a relationship, input-output relationship from this. Okay. How you can develop the input-output relationship? Can you tell me what is the current through this resistance R? The potential at this particular point is YT and potential at this particular point with respect to this ground. Suppose this is your ground actually with respect to this ground. So this is XT and this is YT. So ultimately XT minus YT. This is the potential difference across this resistance. Okay. Since I am subtracting YT from XT, that means I want to, I want to mean that the potential here is greater than the potential at this point Y. Okay. So that's why I'm subtracting this yt from xt and if i subtract yt from xt and then it will it is giving the potential difference across this resistance r and if you divide this by r then you will get this current i and direction of the current will be this as i have given here the arrow sign is indicating the direction of current flow this is current i 
Now the same current is flowing through this capacitance C. Okay. Since the same current is flowing through this capacitance C, and what about the current through this capacitance C? It is I T. If you think that this is I T, this I T will be what? C D U I T D T. Because the voltage or potential across this capacitor is Y T. Therefore, yeah, all of you know C D V D T is the current through a capacitance. All of you know if the voltage across the uh, capacitor is V T. In our case, potential across the capacitor is Y T. Therefore, C D U I T D T is equal to the current through the capacitor. Since the current which is since the current which is flowing through this which is flowing through this resistance, the same current is flowing through this uh, capacitor also. Therefore, I can write Xt minus Yt by R is equal to C dyt dt. Okay. So, here you write just Rc dyt dt is equal to Xt minus Yt. Okay. Now here you see this is nothing but one differential equation. It is nothing but one differential equation. Means actually you can write that uh, RC dy to dt plus yt this is equal to xt. This is the form of the differential equation which is possible to use uh, possible to solve by using differential equation solving procedure. So that means I want to say this is one system. This is one linear system. OK, so the system is now what we see the system is described with the help of differential equation. So this is differential equation in case of analog systems, analog continuous time systems. But in case of discrete time systems, it will be difference equation. Okay, it will be different situation. Huh? So, in this case of discrete time systems, what you can do, you can uh, write some different equation in this manner. For example, uh, y n is equal to. Just I am taking one example, simple example. Y n. Y n is equal to. Uh, uh, you take this. Sorry. Suppose I am taking like this y n plus y in minus one. This equal to x n. This is one different equation. Okay. This is one different equation. So sign is not a dual.
Hello, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you are audible. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Most probably, someone has made this mute. Okay. So I I don't know who is that person creating disturbance. Anyway. Uh. So this is our differential equation. Can you tell me what kind of differential equation is this? This is first order or second order? The first, the first order. First order. Okay. Whether it is linear or nonlinear? It is linear equation, linear, linear differential equation. If you go through any book of differential equation or mathematics book of differential equation, uh, then you can get it that this is <clears throat> a linear differential equation, first order linear differential equation. A system which is represented by first order linear differential equation. That system is called linear system or and first order system, linear first order system. OK. And here, in case of discrete term system, if I write a difference equation, this is difference equation. This is not differential equation. This is difference equation. Okay, and this is also first order difference equation. Okay, so first order difference equation and it is also linear. Therefore, the system which is represented by this difference equation that will be linear first order system. Now, in the in, a, in my next next class, I will try to classify different types of discrete time systems and their uh, input output relationship. Okay, today. I am stopping here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.